Did you know there's actually a newer way to declare columns in SQL Alchemy 2.0 with the ORM style? We can do it with the mapped column function. Hello everyone and welcome back to another SQL Alchemy tutorial. My name is Zek and today we'll be looking into the mapped column mapping style and some of what you can do with it. This was inspired by Python's data classes. So let's take a look at it. The mapped column functions are pretty much the exact same thing as the column class. In fact, it generates a column class behind the hood, but it has some other functionality specific to the SQL Alchemy ORM. So here we have the normal setup we've been having for all of these tutorials thus far. And we can go ahead and modify this to meet the mapped column style of setting everything up. So we can do that by first importing the mapped column here at the top. And then anywhere we have these column variables, just replace them with mapped column. It is a drop-in replacement, so you can just put this in here and run the code and it'll work just like the other way did. And for most of this tutorial, I will have the echo equals true variable here set in this create engine. This is so we can see how everything is happening when creating these database tables. And you'll see what I mean later in the video. So just as it is, we can go ahead and run this. And we can see that it did create the database and it has the creating table right here with the ID, name, age, and then the ID is the primary key, since that is what we have right here. So this does work, but the documentation does recommend a different way to have the declarative base. And we can do the way it recommends by importing declarative base from the ORM package. And then instead of having base equals declarative base as a function, we then replace this with a class of base inheriting from declarative base. And we just have a pass for now since we're not doing anything with it right now. And you can see that once I changed it to this way, my syntax highlighting actually recognizes base.metadata.createAllEngine, which is nice because we do love syntax highlighting around here. So I went ahead and deleted the database and I'm going to go ahead and run this again just to see that it works. And we can see it did create the table and that's awesome. And now that we have everything set up with the mapped column, we can get into specific things we can do with this mapped column function. For this video, we're going to touch on annotations. The mapped column function is capable of getting its column configuration information from type annotations. The type annotations must be used within the generic mapped SQL Alchemy type. So we can go ahead and import the mapped type up here from the ORM package. And then for each of these columns, we'll add the type hints of mapped and then whatever the type we want inside of it. So in this case, I'm just using the regular Python int type for the integer, the Python string for string, and the same thing for the last one. And for this setup, we don't need to provide any types here in the mapped column function because it gets its types from this mapped annotation type right here. So if we remove all of these, and then we go ahead and run it again, and we can see that it set it up. But it is a little bit different. Earlier, we didn't have these not nulls for the age and the name of our user. Since we are using this mapped annotation with a type inside of it, it will default to not null. If you do want to have this to where it can be null, then we can use the optional type from the typing package in Python. So we can come up here and say from typing import optional. Inside the mapped annotation of whatever you want to possibly be null, you need to wrap it in an optional parameter. So here I have the mapped annotation and then optional around the string data type right here. So if I delete the database and we go ahead, save this and run it again, we can see now that when it creates the table, we can see this name no longer has not null on it. If you don't want to provide this optional typing, you can come over to the mapped column and just put in the keyword argument of nullable equals true. We'll go ahead and delete the database and run it again. Age no longer has the restriction of being not null. Since we have no other configurations inside this map column, we can actually get rid of this. SQL Alchemy will go ahead and implicitly create the mapped column based off of this mapped annotation. So I've deleted the database and we can go and run this again. We can see it created the table and name is created without the not null constraint on it. And we can see that there is a primary key equals true here. So that defaults to making it to where it cannot be null. So if you don't include optional in the mapped type annotation, the nullable equals false keyword argument in the mapped column, or you include the primary key is true, then the column can't be null at all. SQL Alchemy does have a default list of types that automatically get converted in the mapped type annotation. 
So here you can see there's booleans, bytes, different kinds of dates, times, decimals, floats, int, strings, UUID. And these will all get converted automatically to the types from SQL Alchemy. You can actually customize your own types or extend this to new types. And we can do this by going into the base class that we created and having a variable called type annotation map. And we have it as a dictionary. And then we can say whatever type we want, how it will get converted over to SQL Alchemy. So in this case, I'm converting all of the ints into big ints, which we can then import straight from SQL Alchemy. And so we have two ints down here. And if we go ahead and run this and see the table that creates, we can see that for both the age and the ID, it created a big int variable instead of just a regular integer variable. So another cool and neat thing you can do with this is you can have custom annotations outside of what we're doing here. And so Python's typing system provides a great way to add additional metadata to Python's type, which is used by the annotated generic type. This allows additional information to be bundled along with the Python type. The mapped column construct will correctly interpret an annotated object by identity when resolving it in the registry dot type annotation map. So we can come over to the sqlalchemy.orm package and import registry. And then from the typing extensions package, we can import annotated. And then we'll go ahead and make our own string variable. And we're going to have this as a length of 20 characters. And we're going to set it equal to an annotated variable right here with the open and close square brackets. And then we provide the type and then any data we want to provide with it. So in this case, it'll be a string, and this 20 is metadata we're providing that can be interpreted by whatever is using this type annotation. And then we will go ahead and create another one with str underscore 100. And we'll do the exact same thing here, but instead of 20, we have 100. You can do this with just the type annotation map variable, but I will show you how to use the registry object. The purpose of the registry object is to register classes as mapped to the database tables, Hold the configuration for the mapper that defines how Python classes should be mapped to a database tables and other metadata management. We need the registry variable inside of our base class to equal the registry object. And we have our type annotations map again. And then we have our str20 with a string of 20 and then str100 with a string of 100. And then we'll come down to our user class and we'll have a variable called first name. It'll be a mapped optional of string 20 and then the variable last name mapped optional string of 100. So we'll go and delete this database and run it again. And we can see it created the table and our type is a varchar, which is a string. And it has a limit of 20 characters. And the last name has a varchar with a limit of 100 characters. And we can see that's exactly what we have here. So cool. And this is neat and all, but there's actually a cleaner way to do this than what we have shown here. We can remove this whole registry block right here and just convert it back into pass. And then up here in our str20 and str100, instead of having a 20 here, we can pass it mapped column. And inside of these, we'll pass the string with the limit that we had before. So this one is a string of 20, and this one will be a string of 100. So we delete our database and go ahead and run this again. It produces the same output down here for creating our table. You can even take the optional that's right here and put it up in your annotation. Go ahead and delete the database and do it again. And we can see the same thing happened here. It doesn't have the not null constraint on our first name since it is an optional up in our type declaration. You can even take a step further beyond and create a file specifically for your annotation types. So you could do something like this, where you just have a bunch of declarations of different annotated types, and then in your files, you can import them and then use them in your classes. This would be really useful if you have to use them in more than one file. Also with these annotations, it makes relationships more visually pleasing. So here we have a table of user and post, and the user has a relationship to a list of posts. So we have our mapped list of posts and quotation marks. Since these are in the same file, it shows this as green for my syntax highlighting since it can recognize it's in the same file. But you wouldn't have to pass these quotation marks if this class was called below the post class. And we just set that equal to a relationship with open and close parentheses. We're not passing any other arguments into it. And inside of our post table, we do need this user ID as a mapped int. 
and it is a mapped column with as a foreign key of user ID. So we'll come down here and we'll create a user variable and set it equal to user passing the name of Zectech and a list of posts, in this case, just one post saying this is some content. We'll add it to our session and go ahead and commit it. Then we will reassign our user object and set it equal to session.scalar with open and close parentheses of select user. This will just return us the first row of the user table. Then we'll go ahead and print out user ID, name, and their posts. And then I'll go ahead and show you the other way of doing a query with user equals session.query, open and close parentheses of user, dot first. They will produce the same result as this up here. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see that in both cases, it printed our user with the relationship. And that's a simple introduction into the mapped columns. We will go over more of what they can do specifically for the ORM in a later video. If you found this video helpful, leave a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.